Let us continue with some more problems on electricity and magnetism and the uh, Okay, uh, this problem here that we have on the screen now, it's actually a relay. Okay, so this is the relay. The diagram shows two linked circuits to control when a, when a bell is uh, switched on. So this is the bell, the relay. Here we have an LDR, like kind of resistor, and a thermistor. Now, before we start answering the question, let us remind us how the, the LDR and the thermistor behave so that we know what happens with a resistance depending on the conditions. Yeah. Now, the LDR now, it's a light dependent resistor. Obviously, its resistance depends on light. Um, if, there is, um, if there is a lot of light, with high light, let's write it here, with lots of light, let's say high light, its resistance, it, its uh, resistance is uh, low, low. So high light, low resistance, low light, high resistance. Okay, the thermistor now works with temperatures. Um, at high temperature, at high temperature, the the higher the temperature, the lower the resistance. So high temperature, low resistance and low temperature, high resistance. So in other words, the LDR has um, a low resistance when there is lots of light, and the thermistor has a low resistance when there's low, um, when there's high temperature, lots of temperature, very hot. Okay, now this is the relay which consists, this is a coil actually. So when there is current, when there's current in the circuit, the coil becomes magnetized. It produces a magnetic field, and when it produces a magnetic field, it can attract the switch and close this other, the second circuit. Okay, so if there is current, the coil becomes a magnet and attracts the switch to close this, the circuit on the other side. Okay, now let us see. I hope we understand the basics here. Now, the conditions are altered, and only one pair of conditions causes the bell to ring. Which pair causes the bell to ring? Okay, so the bell will ring when this circuit here is closed. And the circuit, this circuit will be closed if, if the switch is attracted to the coil. And uh, here the coil will attract the switch if there is current here. And there will be current here if the resistances of this LDR and the thermistor are low, because this is how the current will increase. So low resistance for LDR, low for thermistor. So what do we need? We need lots of light, in other words, to have the low resistance for the LDR. This is the conditions for the LDR, and this is for the thermistor. Eh? Thermistor. So what do we need? We need high light, low, I mean lots of light, in other words. Okay. Bright. So bright. These two, these two questions have bright light. And uh, high temperature, hot because at high temperature, the resistance is low. So high temperature, so this is the correct answer. It has both lots of light and high temperature. So this is the correct answer, okay? Um, if you need any clarification, guys, just send me a message, eh? All right. So I hope you understand this thing with a relay, eh? So, until, I don't know if you write a message, but let's see something else now. Okay, what's that? There are mixed um, magnetism and, elect and electrostatics and electricity. I hope there is some logic gate further on. We can find something. All right. Um, let's make this pretty because it's small. All right. It says now, uh, which test could be used to find which end of a magnet is the North Pole? Okay. So we have a magnet, we don't know its poles, and uh, which test can we use to find out? Putting it near a compass needle, of course, that is definitely a yes. Let's read the others to see what they said. Putting it near a ferrous material, no. Yeah, a ferrous material could be a magnetic material, but who cares? We wouldn't know what the, it wouldn't give us any message about the polarity of the magnet. 
because why because if you bring a magnet close to a magnetic material it always attracts the magnetic material so whether it's a north pole or the south pole both poles attract the magnetic material so it gives us no information so this is, it cannot be correct the next question putting the magnet near a non-ferrous material of course not it wouldn't uh, it's not even magnetic there's no interaction there so we cannot tell which pole is which and the last putting it near a steel spoon uh well no of course not it's the same case like this case it's a magnetic material yes but it will not give us any information because it, it will be attracted to the magnet but we cannot say which pole attracts it you see, that's a good point to say now, that if we want to uh, figure out the polarity of a magnet, like a bar magnet, mm, we look for repulsion. Repulsion will tell us, uh, not that attraction cannot tell us um, about the polarity because um, both poles attract the magnetic material. Okay, so the, the correct answer is A. The next question, I see magnets again. In, in, two, in, two separate, um, in two separate experiments, a magnet is brought near to an unmagnetized iron bar. An unmagnetized iron bar. This causes the bar to become magnetized. Okay, so there will be interaction here. So here's the first and the second experiment. Which magnetic poles are induced at X and Y? Okay, so the here's the x well if um, if we bring the magnet near the bar it will attract it of course and why will it attract it because this iron bar uh, will be a magnet tem temporarily uh, a magnet is will induced in the, the iron bar and they will uh, attract one another which means this will become north pole and this will become south pole okay so x will be north pole in this case now in the second experiment, you see they change the magnet, they bring the north pole near the iron bar. And again, the two will attract one another because this will be magnetized temporarily. And since they will attract, this will be a south pole and this will be a north. So the y will be a north. So we have x north, y north. Oops. Both north poles, in other words. So correct answer is also A. And I hope you agree. Next, what is next? Oh, electrostatic substance. All right. A polythene rod repels an, inf an inflated balloon hanging from a nylon thread. Repel, that is very, a very important word. Why? Because repulsion tells us, tells us that hmm, both objects must be charged, definitely charged. If there was attraction, we couldn't say with... Uh, with certainty if, if both were charged, but at least one would be charged. But because it's repulsion, we know that both objects involved here are going to be charged. Now, what charges must the rod and the balloon carry? Okay, because there is repulsion, we said both objects must be charged. And because they repel, they must be charged with the same similar charge, but we don't know now which charge, let's see. Let's see the options here. Um, option A, the rod and the balloon carry opposite charges. No, this cannot be true because if they had opposite uh, charges, they would attract because like charges uh, repel, unlike attract. And here they repel. Option B, the rod and the balloon carry like charges. Yes, this is a correct answer. They have to carry like, um, like charges because they repel. The rod and the charged, um, the rod is charged, but the balloon is not. No, this cannot be the case because in this case we would see attraction. A charged object attracts an uncharged object. And then the balloon is charged, but the rod is not. Same case. This is not correct because if one object is charged and the other is uncharged, there is always attraction. Here there is always attraction. The, the interaction is always attractive. Always attract. And, and this is a very important remark. Eh? 
a charged object always attracts an uncharged object. Object never repels. So repulsion, both of them must carry like charges. The correct answer must be B. Next is the, what I say now. Which circuit includes a capacitor? And what does the capacitor do in this uh, circuit? Okay, let's see the options. We have here a, uh, the option. There's a column of labeled circuit. They mean a type of circuit as far as I see here, potential divider or time of delay. Okay, and the other column says what the capacitor does. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Um, here we have, if the circuit is a potential divider, stores current. No, goodness, this is a nonsense. Stores current, actually, nonsense doesn't mean anything. <laughs> so this is wrong, okay, this, this is wrong, the A. I mean, nothing stores current. Cu current is not stored, okay. Uh, option B, uh, the circuit is a potential divider, and it stores energy. Uh, yeah. Well, a capacitor can store it, uh, store energy, but um, let's see the other options. Let's see. The next, the, the circuit is a time delay and stores current. That's also rubbish because there's no stores current. Time delay and stores energy. Oh, okay, that is a, the best option here. So this is the correct option. So the capacitor stores energy and the time delay, yeah. Uh, I don't know if, uh, I think we need to discuss about this, this type of circuit. We haven't, we haven't seen it up to now. Let, uh, let us wait until we see it again. Maybe we should discuss it. Uh, all right, so let us see the next problem. Oh, look at this problem. That's a tricky one. I would like I would like you actually to think for yourselves as well. I don't want to give us the answer straight away. A student sets up the circuit shown. The switch is open. So this switch is open. Which lamps are on and which lamps are off? Hmm. Let's see. I, I'll wait for a couple of minutes for you guys. Look at this loop, the first loop. Obviously, obviously, this is on, isn't it? <laughs> the first one is the easy one, it's on. How about the other ones now? No. Remember that um, I see a message there, Z is on. How about the Y? <laughs> it's true, Z is on. What about the Y? Yeah, that is correct. Your answer is correct there. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Okay, guys. Yeah, the correct answer, this is the, all of them are on, actually. This is on and this is on. You know, if you get confused with the shape of the circuit, which is very common to be confused, especially at this level, try and see if you can, if you can redraw the circuit to look a little bit de uh, different. Okay, obviously the first, the first loop is this one, which is easy, isn't it? Here's the... The first, the first bulb, which is the X. This is obviously on. I mean, you can see it clearly. It's not like a big problem. Here is the complication, isn't it? Now, if you look, okay, you said that Z is on, which is very correct, because I, I, I think you, you saw this, this outer loop, which is uninterrupted. There's no open switch in the outer loop. And that is why you said it's on and this is very correct. Let's, let's draw this outer loop and draw the Z here, which is on as well. Uh, this is the Z and we said it's on. Yes, true. But, but look at this Y. Look at the ends of this Y. You see this, uh, this bulb Y here? It's, it's connected across the Z like that. So it's like having, in other words, across the two ends of Z, we have this other bulb, which is the Y, the Y bulb. Now, if I draw it this way, can you see that um, although, that, although we have uh, this open switch there, 
these these two are actually in parallel. It's a parallel branch here, those two together. Can you see them? Here they are. So they are both on. So all of all of these verbs actually are on. That is why the question D is the correct one. It is a closed circuit. Uh, 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 do you mean uh, this branch here? Yeah. I, I want you to see that this bulb Y, it's actually connected across bulb Z in parallel to bulb Z, despite the corners and the sharp angles in the drawing. These two are in parallel. It's like uh, some, something like that, if you can see. And um, uh, what else we can say? Uh, then how can I, in this circuit now, how can I represent this, this open switch? Look at this, it's something like from there, up to there, there's a branch like that with, a, with an open uh, switch somewhere, which it's a little more. I'm trying to find a good way for us to understand this uh, switch between this and this. It's like having actually something like that, a branch like that with an open switch, which is like of no consequence to our bodies, really. Something like that. You can see it's something like that, which is, um, makes no difference. Even whether it was open or closed, that would be like a, like a short circuit here. But, but this point and that point are actually common here. So it makes no difference, really. Uh, as long as, um, I hope now you understand why all of these bulbs are actually on. Ah, nice to, I know that what you mean, you say, I've built 300 of something that is almost like this. <laughs> yeah. So the moral of the story here is for us to, to remember that if we get confused with the way they show us a circuit diagram, we can redraw it in a different way and maybe to help us. And perhaps we can redraw it separately. Actually, there is a nice way to redraw complex circuit diagrams. Maybe we can do it one day. All right, so let's see what is the next. Ah, another potential divider here, as always. Um, Okay, now what is this? The diagram shows a thermistor, here it is, in a potential divider. The voltmeter is connected, blah, blah, across, the, I suppose it says here, across the thermistor, okay? The graph shows how the resistance of the thermistor changes with temperature. So uh, we, we see that the higher the temperature, the higher the temperature, the lower the resistance, which is what we know about thermistors. Um, the higher the temperature, the lower the resistance of the thermistor usually. Okay. Uh, as the thermistor becomes warmer, which means its resistance drops, what happens to its resistance and what happens to the reading on the voltmeter? Okay. The reading of the voltmeter and the resistance. Well, it, the, the higher the temperature, the lower the resistance. If it becomes warmer, obviously its resistance will decrease. So it has to be one of those two answers that says resistance decreases. Now we need to uh, see what happens to the voltmeter reading. Well, in this case, if the, if the resistance um, decreases, the voltmeter reading will also decrease. If the resistance decreases, the reading of the voltmeter will also decrease, and this will increase, as we were talking about. We were saying that last week. We saw quite a few of these examples, isn't it? So both resistance and its uh, and the voltmeter across the thermistor will decrease. So the correct answer is A. Okay. Uh, uh, why did you say B? I'm sorry, let me read your comment. <laughs> it's your dad's job. <laughs> uh, 
uh, why does the voltmeter decrease, it says. Uh, we had discussed it again last week, you remember. You see, what, it's a potential divider. When, remember we said when we have two resistances in series, which is what we have here, because um, of battery. And, and these two resistances have a different value, they're not equal. The, the potential difference across each uh, would be, let's call it V1 and V2. The potential difference across each resistance will, be, has, will have a value in proportion to this resistance. The smaller the resistance, the smaller the potential difference. The bigger the resistance, the bigger the potential difference. The, the, drop, the potential drop across uh, each uh, device is in proportion to the resistance of the device, okay? As long as we remember that both V1 plus V2 make up always the total potential difference supplied by the battery, isn't it? So if we, if, uh, if say one of these resistances here was a variable resistor and uh, we decrease this resistance, the, the, the voltage across the resistance will also decrease because um, the current, Actually, I don't want to talk in terms of current, but I want you to remember that the potential difference across each resistor is in proportion to the value of the resistor. So here we have, again, two resistors of some sort, one after the other. The potential difference across each, when we add them, let's call them V1 and V2, will make up the V total, which is the one supplied by the battery, okay? If, uh, if we decrease the resistance here, the potential difference across the first resistor will drop, whereas the, the second one, the V2, will increase so that the sum is always equal to the total resistance, because to the total potential difference, I mean. Because remember, uh, the, the potential difference across each kind of represents um, how much energy per unit charge is transferred to each resistance, isn't it? If the resistance decreases, less energy will transfer to the, um, across this uh, resistance. And that is why the, the potential difference is less if uh, the resistance decreases. Whereas the higher the resistance, the higher the voltage, and the more energy will be transferred across uh, as the charge moves. Uh, as a char yeah, as the charge moves uh, from one end to the other, colliding and transferring energy. So, So once the resistance decreases, the voltmeter reading will also decrease. And of course, simultaneously, the voltage, the potential difference across the second resistor will increase. Because these two always, they sum have to give us the total potential difference applied by the source. It is shared between the two resistors, the potential difference. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, let us go to another past exam. Um, yeah, let's start from question 28. Okay. What do we have here now? Uh, the, the ends of three metal rods are tested are tested by holding end Q of rod one close to the others in turn. Yeah, it's about magnetism, isn't it? Let, let's see what is this, what is happening here. Now the ends of three metal rods are tested by holding end Q of rod one close to the others in turn, all right. So this is the end of rod one that we hold close to the others and see what happens. The ends, are, the results are as follows. The end Q attracts end R, okay. So this attracts end R. End Q attracts S. Oh, look at this. Okay, end Q attracts uh, this R. It also attracts this S, okay. Then, um, and Q attracts and T, 
and repels you. Oh, brilliant. We have a repulsion. So we'll start from the repulsion because this is how um, we said with repulsion, we know for sure that, um, okay, these are not charged objects, these are magnets. The same thing applies to magnetism because if we see repulsion, we know that both rods definitely are magnets. Uh, because attraction does not give us any information about both of these. We know one will be a magnet, the other we don't know if it's magnet or unmagnetized. But if we see repulsion, immediately we know that the other one is also a magnet. So and Q repels and U. Okay, great. So now we can tell what we know for sure. Now this is a magnet here. We can say that with um, conviction, this is a magnet. And this is also a magnet, of course, since we see repulsion. Okay, so if these are magnets, means that the one pole is po um, negative and the other one is, what am I saying, sorry, <laughs> it's a magnet. One pole is south and the other pole is north. We don't know which, what, what is what, but at least we know for sure that these two are magnets. And um, okay, so and Q repels U, okay. So we know also that since Q repels U, this must be um, like poles of the magnet. So Q, Q and U must be like poles for sure, which means T, um, Q and T, Q and T are, um, are unlike. And they should attract actually, unlike, okay. I don't know if we need this information, but nevertheless, we can say that with conviction, with, with, with certainty. These are certain things that we can tell. Okay, which of the metal rods is a magnet? Oh, if this is the magnet, is what we're talking about. So we know for sure that rod three is a magnet now. Hmm. Uh, rod one only, well, we know that the rod, Rod one is a magnet, rod three is also a magnet. So this cannot be correct because we have two magnets there, rod one and rod two. Now we can so we cannot say that with um, certainty. We, we cannot say. Rod one and rod three, this is true. For sure, these two are magnets. So this is definitely correct. Rod three only, no, because we know rod one is also a magnet. I hope you understand here the reasoning. Eh? When we see repulsion, we grab, we grab the repulsion first. It gives us good information with certainty because attraction does not give us certain information. We can only say maybe this and maybe that. But when we see, see it repulsion, we can know for sure. Okay, guys? Yeah, see, correct. You got it. Now, um, me, it's 1158. You know something, I think that next week we need to discuss a little bit the logic gates. I can't find so many questions with logic gates. Here's another one. There's one. Okay, guys, I think next week we, we need to concentrate on logic gates and truth tables and see some questions of the sort. I hope you agree, okay? Okay, guys, we need to stop here because look at the time again. So enjoy your weekends. And um, if you need something in particular, in particular, please let me know. All right, we will do it. We'll do it. <laughs>